outside of food and nutrients, what should people do about memory loss? Well, the physical exercise, of course, does boost circulation into the brain, and that's really good. You want to tell them about brain games? Oh, yes. We're working with a neuropsychologist, Dr. Thomas Harding, at the Maui Memory Clinic, and he is an expert on brain games. What he does is a, an exhaustive analysis of where the memory is not working. All the different parts of the brain he tests exhaustively, and he finds whether it's uh, directional or people's names or daily functions, he figures out exactly which parts of the brain are not up to par. And then he has created a series of brain games to target each one for strengthening that area. And he knows from what he speaks because he went through total memory loss and regained it all for himself. And outside of these targeted brain games, if we can keep learning, then we keep our brain sharp. Learn a language, learn a skill, keep learning and keep interacting with people, and this keeps our brains healthy. It's not nutrition, but it's very effective. You've mentioned some things to prevent vascular dementia. Anything else you want to mention about preventing vascular dementia? Well, one of these topics on vascular dementia is inflammation. It is an inflammatory disease. So we want to eat as many plant anti-inflammatories as possible. They're found a lot in the cruciferous family, like kale and cabbage and Brussels sprouts, and that whole family is really rich in anti-inflammatories called indole-3-carbonyl or sulforaphane. Then we have the soy products, please only organic soy products, and these soy products contain genistein and diazdine, and these two are anti-inflammatory components that have been shown to reduce the inflammation in the arteries, in the brain, and even in the joints for osteoarthritis. And on the other hand, of course, we want to avoid the inflammatory substances that may occur in, for instance, broiled or barbecued meat has these substances called advanced glycation end products. And they encourage inflammation in our arteries and in our brains and basically shower the brain with free radical radiation like damage. The advanced glycation end products are formed when the meat is broiled or barbecued and it has that brown crust on the outside. Or heavily fried. Or heavily fried. Now chefs are taught to do this deliberately, the Amadori reaction, the Maillard reaction, because it's considered to taste more delicious in the restaurants. But it is damaging in the long run because the word end products is the tricky word here. And it cannot be broken down by the body. You can't get rid of it. And then it, it can increase free radical activity 50 times in the brain. So it's actually cooking in the brain, trying to break it down. They're also found in aged cheeses. And in our trial, we had people not eat aged cheeses. Compliance was an issue, of course. But if you don't eat the aged cheeses, then you don't get the advanced glycation product in products there, too. Is there any way to lower the accumulation of amyloid plaques in the brain for people with Alzheimer's? Are there drugs that do that? How about more natural methods? There are not drugs that have successfully done that. There have been some trials, but they have failed. The thing is, those, end pro those, those fuzz balls called amyloid plaque in the brain are very difficult to get rid of. The only substance that has been found to actually reduce them is a plant called Dota-Cola, which we did use in our trial. But I imagine the effect is very small. However, as these amyloid plaques are being made, the genes create these two enzymes, gamma secretase and beta secretase, and they snip off the amyloid precursor protein into these beta amyloid peptides. They then become toxic, neurotoxic, damaging the brain, these newly formed amyloid betas, and they become fibrils and then become part of the amyloid plaque. So if we can stop the process of making amyloid beta, which we can by quenching the genes that do this, including the genes that increase the risk of Alzheimer's disease, we can quench them all. As long as you're getting your vitamin B12 and folate, two harmless and safe B vitamins, we also added SAMe to the trial because that way we were sure that people were quenching the genes and quieting them so they weren't building these toxic neurotoxic compounds that become amyloid plaque. And again, by reducing the advanced glycation end products that would lodge in the plaque, showering the brain with free radicals, that helps too. So while we can't completely stop 
the plaque or get rid of the plaque, we can stop the neurotoxicity and a lot of the damage to the brain while they're being formed and after they're formed from compounds being lodged in them. So you're telling us that the ApoE4 presenilin gene can be suppressed. You can quench the expression of the gene. Well, those with are two different factors. genes, but okay. yes, the presenilin Thank gene uh, definitely can be suppressed with these two simple, cheap, safe B vitamins. And for safety, I went two different ways in the trial, the two B vitamins and the SAMe that they make. So we wanted to be really sure that people were not building these neurotoxic products anymore and building their amyloid plaques anymore. And SAMe does have, it's very safe. We produce it ourselves. However, if you're taking neuroactive, excuse me, psychoactive medication, uh, such as serotonin, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, you should not mix the two. SAMe has also been used for depression. And since it makes you happy and the psychoactive drugs make you happy, you don't want to get too happy. 